Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 is equal to 16. So I'm going to first start by subtracting 16 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of 4 minus 16 is equal to 0. Now, x to the power of 4, I'm going to rewrite as x to the power of 2 times 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 2 times 2, I can rewrite that as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 16, I'm going to rewrite as 4 to the power of 2, which is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is 4. So now I have x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, this is going to give me two equations. I have x squared plus 4 is equal to 0, and I have x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So x squared plus 4 equals 0. I can actually subtract 4 on both sides, and I have x squared minus 4, or sorry, x squared is equal to negative 4. Now for x squared minus 4 equals 0, I can add 4 on both sides, and I get x squared is equal to positive 4. Now for x squared equals positive 4, this is pretty simple. We just take the square root on both sides. Square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4, that's going to equal positive or negative 2. Now for x squared is equal to negative 4, I'm going to start by doing the same thing. I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative 4. However, the square root of negative 4, I'm going to rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number i. So I have this square root of 4 times i. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is positive or negative 2. So I have x is equal to positive or negative 2i, and x is equal to positive or negative 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 3x squared is equal to 216. So I'm going to first start by rewriting this as x to the power of 3 to the power of x squared is equal to 216. And now I'm going to switch the order of 3 and x squared. So this is the same thing as x to the power of x squared to the power of 3 is equal to 216, I'm going to rewrite as 6 to the power of 3. Now these two 3's can simply cancel out. So now I have x to the power of x squared is equal to 6. Now I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x squared to the power of 2 is equal to 6 squared. And I'm going to switch these two places. So now I have x squared to the power of x squared is equal to 6 squared. And now I can let x squared equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 6 squared. And 6 squared, that's the same thing as 36. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 36. Now if I take the ln on both sides, I get ln y to the power of y is equal to ln 36. And now if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so that's going to equal b times ln a. So in this case, I can move y to the front, front, so now I have y times ln y is equal to ln 36. Now y is the same thing as e to the power of ln of y, because the e and ln cancel out. So, I'm going to replace y with e to the power of ln y. So now I have e to the power of ln y 
times ln y is equal to ln 36. Now I'm going to take the w Lambert function on both sides. So I have the w of ln y times e to the power of ln y is equal to w of ln 36. And this results in e to the power of ln y equaling e to the power of w of ln 36. And remember how we let y equal to x squared. So now I have x squared is equal to e to the power of w of ln 36. And if I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to the square root of e to the power of w of ln 36. And this is plus or minus. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 is equal to 1. So I'm going to first start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, x to the power of 4, I can rewrite this as x to the power of 2 times 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 2 times 2. I can write this as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Now this minus 1 is equal to 0. Now 1 is the same thing as 1 squared. So I have x squared to the power of 2 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. If I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is 1. So I have x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. And this is equal to 0. Now, Remember how now this is a this is equal to this actually gives me three equate or sorry two equations. I have x squared plus one is equal to zero, and I have x squared minus one is equal to zero. So for x squared plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x squared is equal to negative 1. Now if I take the square root on both sides, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 1, if you guys already know, is i. So I have positive and negative i. And for x squared minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 1. If I take the square root, I get x is equal to positive or negative 1. So that's two more solutions. So these are my four solutions to this problem.